This is a Google Chromecast with Google TV. Okay, so I decided to uh, to take a hit for you guys and and see what the Google Chromecast with Google TV is like here in the UK because. I th I've, I've heard reports that it doesn't do all the things that you would like to do, but you can see down here it's got a bit of a UK branding on it to make it a little bit indigenous to the UK. So we've got YouTube, Netflix, Prime Video and Disney Plus, which are all standard. Then of course we have ITV Player, ITV Hub, sorry, My5, and then Google Photos and Spotify. Not YouTube Music, but Spotify, but I guess that maybe will sell a, form, a few more units for them, so go for that. Now this is, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that this isn't the be all and end all of, sorry, couldn't find the knife. Um, this isn't exactly the be all and end all of Google's Chromecast style lineup. The, the Chromecast Ultra is the one that, well, does 4K and upscales. This does 4K as well, but doesn't upscale, which is a bit of a, bit of an annoyance. However, this features the Google TV overlay. And that's not a replacement Android TV, as I had considered on the podcast recently. Uh, this is um, just basically an app, so I imagine we're going to start seeing this ripped off and whacked on to various different other devices. I know some people have stuck it on the NVIDIA Shield so far and are not having great luck with it, but um, we'll have a quick look and see what's inside. Uh, first up we have what looks like the Chromecast here. I will go as far to say that I was a little bit inebriated whenever I uh, ordered this, so I, I can't remember what colour I went with. Um, that would be white. I'm not Chris Barclough. Then we have a remote control as well, which we'll come to. And then we have a Let's Get Started Guide, which is probably your kind of typical Chromecast blurb of how to set up. Well, I suppose actually putting batteries in, get Google Home, voice remote, and stuff you can do. We have a USB Type-C charge cable and the charger itself. Which is a 1.5 amp charger. Okay, travel size as well. Because I guess Comcasts are travelable. Uh, yeah, a good decent long wire, um, which I can't say has been a a problem with previous Chromecasts. They've always had, had good long wires to be able to reach from TVs, especially ones that are wall-mounted, down to the possible floor. So how long is this one? Let's check. It's about two meters, so if you need more, um, look elsewhere. Now this is obviously the little pebble that we're dealing with here. There's one button on the back there, a an HDMI there and the model number and it's quite smooth and swish I, I do quite like it um, for something that's going to hang from the back of the TV and I'll rarely see ever again it's quite nice it says Google on it that plugs in like so this goes in like so felt a bit weird going in and now I get to dig around the back of the television plugging this in. Actually I'm not going to just yet because I forgot to have a look at this because we got some batteries too. This is the remote which is very very light at the moment and um, we'll whack in the batteries obviously they are going to add two triple A's worth of weight to it and they both go in that way I 
it's very simple. Um, obviously, this is not rechargeable batteries, but you use rechargeable batteries in it. I do wonder how long this is going to last on standard batteries. It uses IR, but then I believe it also uses Bluetooth to communicate with this, where IR is entirely for blasting at your uh, TV. Grand. So this time we're actually going to go across and I'm going to dig around the back of the TV and install it. And hopefully by the time that's done, you'll be there watching. Okay, and hello there. We have the ability to start pairing with my... Remote. Uh, um, yeah. So that's us, uh... Set in, we go to our Google Home app, I believe. Well, we'll go through the... Yes, okay. Uh, we're looking for English in the United Kingdom. And we can set up the Google Home app. Download the Home app when instructed on the app. Scan the QR code. There we go. It's uh, looking for devices. We are now connecting. Give it my Wi-Fi password and we're good. Seems to have been successful. We're signed in, good to go, downloading system updates. Accepting stuff on the Google Home app. And then while it's doing this and taking its sweet time it is asking us what uh, services we would like to set up on here. Um, obviously, I have made my selection and we've got a few things to throw on here. So it does keep you busy while it's doing things in the background. OK, so while that's setting up, I thought I'd go through some of the buttons on here. We obviously have the back button, the Google Assistant button. This is a directional pad that you can click in different directions and the center is a select button. We have the home button and a dedicated mute button, which is always nice. Uh, dedicated YouTube, dedicated Netflix, possibly configurable, I don't know yet. A power button and a uh, change source option, which is quite good because the one on my remote control is a bit dead. There's a volume rocker on the side, which is quite nice. There's a little imprint on the back there that uh, allows you to balance it in your finger or take off the back, whatever way you want to look at it. And uh, that's about it. There's nothing else on this remote. It's straight and to the point, and it looks quite good, especially in white. Installation of that update took um, maybe two or three minutes, actually. It was quite considerable. A nice logo to symbolize a television. Wow, okay, so that took quite some time. Uh, I was a bit shocked at how long it took. It did it all itself, really, but um, it's asking me to set up my remote now, so we're gonna have a go at that. So we'll set up remote. Maybe the AV receiver is a Samsung. They do indeed. Choose the power button of your TV brand. Okay, so I have a Panasonic TV. Press the power button. That one. That's the stuff. Did the power button work? Yes. So that's our Chromecast now set up. Oh, grief. Okay, so we're in. And this is us. There's a G up on the top right-hand corner because it's me, as opposed to my profile picture. Uh, for you, movies, shows, other apps that are available, and library. The library. Okay, never mind. All change. Ah, we've gone back to For You, Movies. Just need to be slower now. I'm 350 megabyte virgin broadband, by the way, so we're okay speed wise. Uh, shows, apps, and then library. 
which looks exactly as it did earlier. These are movies from, well, I don't know, the watch list is, I think, attached to the Google Play Movies, uh, whereas that movie is on Google Play Movies, so that appears to be the ones that it's not showing. These ones are ones I own through, own through Google Play Movies, and those as well. Okay, so, so for you, we have Netflix, these bits and pieces across here, um, your apps, I didn't install that app, so I don't know why it's there. I did install that, I didn't install that, I did install that. So it's gone ahead and my five and ITV Hub as well, and BBC iPlayer, I didn't ask it to install, but they're showing there. Uh, trending on Google, uh, iPlayer things, which I don't want, uh, from your watch list. Disney Plus, Netflix, Prime Video. Okay, so I'm all right with that from your watch list, but then that's stuff that I've added myself. Sci-fi shows across various different networks, mostly Prime and Netflix, but Battlestar Galactica on the BBC iPlayer is not something that I would have chosen. So yeah, it, it seems to want to show me various different services that I don't actually have or have. Well, I certainly haven't used in a long time. Going into the settings, what do we have under settings? We have our network and internet information, uh, privacy, location, usage, diagnostics and ads, play and sound. So we have HDMI CEC set up, which is fine. Obviously that allows us to use the remote control with the TV. Uh, match content. Match content dynamic range. If we turn that on, what does it do? Who knows? Advanced display settings. Allow game mode. Oh, because you can play games on this. But you can't play Stadia. And advanced sound settings are set up for automatic. What are our options across here? Automatic, never, manual, Atmos. AAC, Dolby Digital, and Dolby Digital Plus. We'll leave it on automatic until I start to experience problems. Okay, so uh, we can uninstall BBC iPlayer, hopefully. I don't want that on there. And I don't know what BBC Sounds is, but I don't pay my TV license, so I can't have those. BT Sport, <laughs> right. Never experienced that. Uh, ITV Hub, not interested in either. So it is nice that you can get rid of these, but it is a bit annoying that they are installed out of the box. Then we've got the ones that we put on there initially. We go into About, we have uh, Android TV, OS Build, Kernel, uh, August Security Patch, and it's running Android 10. Date and time, language, keyboard, which keyboard we use, storage, so total space is 4.4 gigabytes free, even though I've just uninstalled a bunch of apps. Okay, that must be total space used. Available is 2.6. That doesn't add up. Anyway, ambient mode allows us to change to Google Photos. Ooh, what's experimental? We like that low bandwidth mode, no thanks. Uh, weather. Well, we'll keep the weather up as long as it doesn't interfere with TV viewing. Okay, so there's new software for the remote, which is a bit odd that it didn't tell me that earlier on. I had to go into the menu and find that out myself. Be interesting to see how long this takes. Okay, so that took a couple of minutes just to update there, and it's brought us back to... our main option. Okay, so apps from my other devices. We have games. I've never used that. Uh, Facebook Watch. I'm not seeing Plex. How do we search for an app? Install Plex on... 
Oh, hold button, darling. Install Plex on my Chromecast. Here's Plex on the Google Play Store. Okay, so it wasn't showing up imme immediately, but uh, it's there. And still we're getting the ITV Hub. Now that I've uninstalled iPlayer, uh, hopefully it'll show us less iPlayer stuff. Okay, so that has worked out quite well. Uh, we are getting Prime and Netflix stuffs. But trending on Google is showing iPlayer-based content, including premium content. Where's that? That we can buy on Google Play Movies. I'm a bit annoyed that this is showing up like that. There's no artwork to go along with it when it's coming from Google itself. It just goes to show that Google Play Movies is so half-baked, it's painful. I'm a bit more satisfied now that we have less and less uh, iPlayer stuff, although that trending on Google is showing a good bit more. Hopefully after a couple of hours of use, we will start to see much, much less from services that we never use. I will say throughout that I'm having a bit of trouble because uh, home is over here and back is here. I keep going to hit that to go home and activating the assistant, which is a bit of a pain. It'll take a wee while for it to get used to uh, home and back being there. Um, obviously that's a different button shape. Uh, it sits up, it's a wee bit rounded, so it's almost as soon as I press it, I'll realize, ah, oh, that's the assistant, and then it pops up on the screen. Whereas these buttons are very flat. This one will be a wee bit more convex. But then coming from Roku, you know, I've got the back and the home beside each other, so it's just having to retrain my muscle memory as to where we're going. It'll take a wee while for that. But that is the Google Chromecast. Uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments box down below. Hit that subscribe button and turn on those notifications. Remember to tune in to Talk Sport on a Wednesday morning at half past midnight. And additionally, the Tech Addicts podcast on a Sunday afternoon. And other than that, take care.